But first, tonight in about an hour and a half, the budget will be brought down for a second time by Wayne Swan's former staffer, Jim Chalmers. Indeed, Chalmers was the chief of staff when Julia Gillard's then treasurer promised this. The four years of surpluses I announced tonight are a powerful endorsement of the strength of our economy, resilience of our people and the success of our policies. I was there in the room at the time and we know now, don't we, he never delivered a surplus, let alone the four he promised. Earlier today, in the dance of a thousand veils that we get around budgets, we were told that tonight's surplus would be some $9 billion. Well, in that respect, Chalmers is better than his old boss. But how real is this surplus? $9.3 billion, we're told. That's $9,000 million. Well, it sounds a lot. But given Australia's $3 trillion economy, it isn't. Indeed, it's scarcely 1% of total Commonwealth debt. And that's racing towards $1 trillion or $1,000 billion. And all a surplus means is that in this current financial year, as a country, we have earned more than we've spent. $9.3 billion more. But put that against our current debt, use that $9.3 billion to pay a little bit off what we owe, and it's a drop in the ocean. Our debt would go from $8.892.1 billion to $888.8 billion. See what I mean by a drop in the ocean? Now, most in the media fall for the spin of a surplus. But when our national debt is that big and the surplus is that small, well, it's practically a rounding error. It's the equivalent of you perhaps finding $1,000 in your bank at a time when you owe $100,000 and have got very little prospect of paying any of it back. And in any event, this labour surplus is the equivalent of a win at the races. It's the result of luck, not policy. A surplus produced by continued sky-high prices and hence big tax revenues for iron ore and resources such as coal and gas that Labor wants to demonise, wants to make us leave in the ground. Now, there are some political tricks that you need to know as the government tries tonight to drown us in spin. Some of the other tricks I want you to know about, the, the other tricks that Labor will deploy to make their budget books look better than they really are. They will move on future fund returns. I'll put them on budget. So using the investing skill of recent future fund chairman Peter Costello to bolster Labor's government revenue when Labor politicians had nothing to do with those future fund decisions. It's what they did last year too when they got themselves to a surplus. And if Josh Frydenberg had done the same, put the future fund returns on budget in his last budget as treasurer, well, he would have got there with a surplus as well. What other tricks do Labor have up their sleeve? Well, I guarantee you that some spending, such as future Made in Australia grants to private companies, well, they will all be parked off budget. They'll be put into their capital accounts, even though these grants are never likely to produce a commercial return. And they will play all the usual games with immigration, ramping up the intake to artificially inflate economic growth because in simple terms, more people grows the economy even though they don't necessarily boost GDP per person. The real reason most of us right now feel poorer even though the economy as a whole has been growing, albeit slowly, is because we've been in a per capita recession with GDP going backwards per person for the past four quarters. This morning, supposedly to bring down total migration from half a million to a quarter of a million a year, the government was spinning that they'll put caps on the number of overseas students. Now, that's because everyone who's here for more than a couple of months, including all of these overseas students, well, they need a house, a job and a way to get around. But it remains to be seen how effective any student numbers caps will be given that the government wants to be acting here or seem to be acting without being sure it really wants to act. Public concerns about record immigration have to be addressed, but actually cutting immigration could mean we plunge into an official rather than just an unofficial or per capita recession. And it would mean trouble with all those universities and others for whom overseas students seeking immigration rather than an educational outcome have become a big business model. 
But the basic failing of this budget, based on all the pre-budget spin, will be that it bakes in permanent structural spending on the back of this temporary, accidental day at the races sort of surplus. Prior to the pandemic, Commonwealth spending averaged under 25% of GDP. Now, it blew out to 27% of GDP during the pandemic, and under Labor, long after the pandemic, it's hardly come back. There are already close to two percentage points of GDP in extra locked-in long-term spending, and tonight the government will add to that. There'll be more for the states on housing and health, more for the states to take the pressure off the NDIS and allow the federal government to then pretend it's reined in the costs of the NDIS, even though it's just changed the spending from one account to the other. More to subsidise the wages of people in the so-called care economy. But why on earth should taxpayers be helping to pay the wages of people employed in private business? That's beyond me. Perhaps because childcare and aged care are two key recruitment areas for the unions, maybe that's the answer. Tonight, expect to see more help for low-income earners with their skyrocketing power bills, even though it's the government's own policy to get to net zero at breakneck speed, which is putting bills up in the first place. Treasurer Jim Chalmers has assured his caucus that it's a true Labor budget. Based on what I know, I suspect he's right, but one thing it won't be is a budget in the Labor tradition of Bob Hawke, who was the last Labor PM to preside over a budget surplus. And in Hawke's case, it was a surplus generated by economic reform and genuine spending restraint. There won't be too much spending restraint tonight. Instead, this government will spend a big with your money to try and buy back your vote. They're struggling in the polls, and the Prime Minister's hope is that you'll fall for his spin. Well, we'll see.